Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna paint this cat on black paper in gouache. You can totally paint this in traditional watercolor on white paper, but I really like the dramatic background that the black paper provides. If you wanna see how this is done, stay tuned. Before we begin, I wanna remind you guys that I recently set up a Patreon for those of you who are interested in having your work critiqued or for those who are interested in one-on-one -on -one classes. The link is in the description below. All right, as always, you'll find a list of the supplies used as well as a PDF of the reference photo and a line drawing in the description below. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see how I transferred this image to the black paper from the line drawing. Okay, let's get going. Today I'm using Karen Dosh gouache for this piece. I started this piece using Neo Color 2 crayons, but I found that they weren't quite as vibrant as gouache was. Here you can see how dull the painting on the left is compared to the one on the right. Neo colors would work fine, but I think that you'd have to work with many layers to reach the level of vibrancy that gouache provides. For paper, I'm using Legion Stonehenge 140 pound cotton black watercolor paper. I've had this sitting in my stash for almost a year now and haven't really had a reason to use it until now. The majority of this painting will be done with this tiny liner brush. I mentioned this brush recently in my top 10 must have brushes video, which I'll link somewhere here on the screen. This is my favorite brush for pet portraits as it allows me to achieve a really nice hair texture. I found this brush randomly in an art shop. It's not branded, but the number on the handle indicates 20 slash zero. Okay, we're gonna begin with the eyes. I like to do this with pet portraits because it allows the piece to come to life almost instantly. For me, it acts as an anchor and somewhere to start. I usually begin with the eyes and then begin working outwards. I tend to kind of fly all over the place when working on pet portraits, but for the sake of the video, I tried to keep things as succinct as possible. So I'm beginning with the white highlights here. This will allow me to kind of map out where everything else is. I'm using straight white gouache at a very thick consistency and just laying down paint anywhere I see white highlights in the reference photo. From here, I'm going to add the small blue flints that I see at the top of the white highlights. I find it is this small blue addition that really brings the eyes to life and gives them shape. The white highlight would be fine on its own, but it's kind of flat. The blue adds a bit of movement and dimension to the eyeball. Really pay attention to the reference photo and, and try to paint exactly what you see. Now I'm gonna begin laying in the lightest green color in the iris. Because we're working in gouache, we'll have no issues layering on top of this color, so I'm putting it down almost anywhere I see the light green color. Next, I'll start laying in the darker green and begin building dimension in the iris. I'm gonna use a small amount of black paint to add some darker tones to add even more dimension. From here, I'll move on to the other eye. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna begin working outwards from the eyes, starting with this little brow section of the left eye. 
I'm using this small liner brush, a thick mixture of straight white gouache, and small whipping motions and with a very light hand to achieve these tiny hairs. This can be tedious, but it's worth it for building texture. And you'll become quicker and quicker as you paint. I'm going to use the same white mixture and technique to paint the white hairs under the eye as well. Next I'll add a touch of the black and brown paint to my white to get a somewhat warm grey to fill in that section to the left of the eye. From here I want to add just a bit of warmth to the bottom of that eye section so I'm going to use a touch of brown and feather it in using the same technique. Now let's move down to this section. One thing that really helps me is to just take a portrait like this one shape at a time. This little section is its own shape and if you break a painting down into smaller shapes it becomes much less daunting. So focusing on this shape here I'm going to build up the white color using the same technique and mixture as before. Keep building layers until you're satisfied with the saturation. Moving on to the next shape, I'm going to continue with the same technique and mixture as I've been using. Now I'm going to move up to the top section of the cat's mouth. You'll notice closer to the nose and the bridge of the nose, it's darker and browner. So I will start from there with brown paint and then move back into the white mixture, taking care to avoid the small dark spots. If you paint over them, don't worry, you can go back in with black paint later. Now I'm going to move back up to above the eye and continue working up there. So again, paying attention to my reference photo, I'm going, to, I'm going to begin feathering in hair along this shape. I'm still using the same white mixture, but I'm going to add a touch of yellow ochre to it to soften it as I move up the cat's forehead. Continue with the two shapes that run parallel to this one. Now 
Okay, next I want to work above the cat's nose. There's a pretty solid mixture of both brown and white hairs happening here, and we want to replicate that by using layers. I'm going to begin with a thick mixture of this brown with a touch of black to dull it down, and I'm going to use it with the same feathering technique to lay down my first layer of hair. Now that I have a layer of brown hairs down, I'm going to go right over top and feather in some white hairs using the same yellowish white mixture that we've used on the cat's forehead. Pay close attention to the direction of hair in the reference photo and make sure you are painting in the same direction. I'm going to move into this shape here next to the bridge of the nose, which is much more white than the bridge itself. I'm going to go in here with just the yellowish white mixture alone. Next I'll start my first layer of brown on this section of the cat's forehead. You'll notice that this hair is in shadow and it's much darker up here. From here I'm going to move back over to the right eye and start building up the white fur around it. I'm just going to continue building up fur and texture as I see it all over the rest of the cat's face, feathering it out as I get closer to the black section. Now I want to move down to the cat's chest, which is really out of focus compared to the rest of the photo. To achieve this appearance, I'm going to switch to a larger round brush and paint the yellowish white and brown mix in somewhat watery washes. I'll also go in with a little bit of black and scrumble it around to build a bit of texture and make it look a little less flat. From here I'm going to go back into the cat's face and continue to build up the fur as I need to. Now let's move to where the cat's ear is kind of poking out near the top of the paper. I'm using my yellowy white mixture and kind of a rocking motion back and forth to build texture here. Still using a very light hand. Alright. 
All right, this is looking great. Let's go ahead and add whiskers. I'm gonna use a watercolor pencil to do this because I want pretty stark lines. Okay, lastly, and because I nearly forgot, we're gonna finish by working on the cat's nose. I'm gonna use watercolor pencils to do this because I already have them out. I'm building up color and texture here with a warm red, an orange, and a black pencil. If you are mixing this in gouache, you could mix an orange, a red, and a black together to kind of get a muted orangey red color and use that to build up texture on the nose. All right, we're all done. I just love how this turned out. And once you get the feathering technique down and you really learn how to break the piece down into shapes, pet portraits become really easy to do. For those of you who wanna see how I transferred the line drawing to my black paper, there will be a time lapse popping up here shortly. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you painted along with me, please let me know in the comments below and tag me on social media. If you'd like to have your work critiqued, you can check me out on Patreon. Thanks again for sticking around and please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this. See you in the next one. Bye!